Well, our moms think we're funny. Oh, hey everyone, this is Torque 182. And I'm a Comey. How's it going? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Oh, so uh, what are we doing today, Okomi? Uh, we just watched another pretty cool movie, and we had so much fun doing our uh, our episode, You Should Watch Tombstone, that uh, we figured we'd talk about this movie, too. And what movie is that? That movie was Darkman. Yes, Sam Raimi's Darkman. Um, you know, if you guys have followed us for any length of time at all, then you know that a constant running theme is uh, is me saying, "What? You haven't seen this? <laughs> How have you not seen this?" And uh, it just so happens that uh, that uh, I pulled up. Um, you're just kind of going through stuff, trying to find something to watch, and I was like, "Wait a minute, you haven't seen Darkman?" He's like, "No, I haven't seen Darkman." I'm like, "Well, shit, you gotta see Darkman." I was like, I "All right, even well, heard of Darkman?" I was like, "Let's watch Darkman <laughs> then." And so that's uh, that's what we did. We watched Darkman. This is your first viewing. Yeah. Uh, so what did you think of Darkman? Uh, I liked it. I liked it. Um, Liam Neeson's always good. He's he's just like a super talented actor, and uh, it, Le- Liam's Neeson. Liam's Neeson. <laughs> Liam's Neeson's. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's always a little weird for me to see him in any role other than Qui Gon. But uh, really, that's what you always associate him with was is Qui Gon Jinn. Yeah, I mean that was the first thing I ever saw him in. You <laughs> not not like Kroll? You don't go back to Kroll? I never saw him in Kroll. Oh. So yeah, <laughs> very very few people have ever seen Kroll. I, I'll be perfectly honest. I've seen parts of Kroll, but I've never actually watched Kroll myself. But yeah, um, you know, it's it was an interesting movie because it kind of fell somewhere between the cracks of a superhero film and body horror. Yeah, because uh, it's it definitely like when he's like not wrapped up in his bandages and not wearing the mask and all that, he definitely has like a body horror vibe, which I'm totally down with. I love <laughs> body horror, and you know that kind of comes back from Sam Raimi's roots too, because of the whole Evil Dead thing. So, oh yeah. Um, my understanding is that um, Dark Man was one of the things that really helped him get the um, the Spider Man movies. Um, was because Dark Man is is basically like a superhero movie. Um, <clears throat> and I remember I was telling you this uh, during the when we we're watching is that they Marvel Comics did a I think it was either five or six issue uh, I think it was deluxe format like Dark Man series. Hmm. And then I believe afterwards they actually did a like a regular dark man comic book. I never picked that up. I just had just the, uh, the one series it came out with, but you, uh, you know, and then they made some, uh, you know, they, they made some dark man sequels, um, with, uh, Arnold Vosloo playing the role of, uh, of dark man. Hmm. Um, and then you had, uh, one was called the return of, uh, Robert Durant. And the other was called, uh, die dark man die, I believe. Huh. And the return of Robert Durant, I believe actually has, um, uh, Larry Drake in it as Robert Duran again. And the other one has, um, oh, what's that guy's name? Um, oh, crap. I had his, his, uh, has his, uh, his name in my head just a minute ago. Um, but anyway, so, uh, and, and they were straight to video, of course, you know, right, um, right. but the, go back to the thing is like, he kind of wrote a comic book movie, then they made some comic books off of it. And then I was like, Hey, I, you know, it's like, here's a guy that wants to do a Spider-Man, apparently. And they're like, hey, I've already kind of directed a comic book movie. And they look at him like, yeah, it's kind of a comic book movie. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's interesting because Darkman, like, I really picked up the vibe that it was like if if Evil Dead and Spider-Man had had a baby. Like, the films, not the, right. <laughs> not the characters. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, if those films had had a baby, it would have been this because... Like, you have a lot of those dramatic camera zooms and, like, those, like, weird POV things and the weird, like, special effects when the character's, like, sanity is fraying and all that is very, very reminiscent of Evil Dead. Oh, yeah. But then, like, the action sequences are just pure, like, Sam Raimi Spider-Man on a slightly tighter budget. and Yeah, you can see, you see a lot of his, uh, of his Evil Dead, like, uh... Like directing style in there. And I love the, I love the way that they, he does the zoom in on, um, 
on his face and then you see like everything kind of you know, breaking around to really kind of show his sanity or lack of sanity mm-hmm. and then and then it all comes back together it's, it's kind of interesting it's like it all breaks apart and then it comes back together but it doesn't come back together and like okay i'm okay now it's like it breaks apart and it comes back together and it's like this whole new personality and yep. then yep. you know it's like take the fucking elephant you know? <laughs> <laughs> such a good line <laughs> and i love watching him i mean it's horrible i love watching him break those guys fingers <laughs> he just kind of twists them all up it's it's, it's, it's awesome. such an obvious prosthetic though. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is. just looks like rubber. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it. It made me happy. <laughs> so I, I, I think Liam Neeson carries it very well too. He just does. The, 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 diff- the way he tries to, even when he's talking to, to Julie and, you know, he's kind of does these like little like sanity breaks during that. It's, yep. Yep. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So, um, the the soundtrack I think carried itself. It served its purpose. It's like exactly what you would expect out of Danny Elfman. Yeah, I was gonna say it sounds very Danny Elfman. Like, did did they show him doing it? Yeah, it okay. was Danny Elfman. Yeah. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and, you, know, the thing is, you can always recognize a Danny Elfman oh, soundtrack. Oh yeah, yeah. And like, as soon as I saw the name, I was like, I think I know what this is gonna sound like. And sure <laughs> enough, like the opening <laughs> notes was. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, like you know, it's not a bad soundtrack at all, but you know, it's it's just exactly what Danny Elfman always composes, and yeah, that it's such a weird feeling because when I first discovered Danny Elfman and was like listening to him through you know the Batman animated stuff, I was like, hey, I like this guy; he's a really really good composer. But then it's like you start listening to him in all the the Burton movies, and you start listening to him in like everything else he does, and the Simpsons right. theme, and all that, and it's like, oh, <laughs> does, he, does he do anything outside of the Bur- Burton movies? Um. That's a good question. He has to. Yeah, he does. He does. I'm just, yeah. I'm just being. Dead. <laughs> uh. So yeah, um, I think the only thing I could really complain about, and you mentioned this during the movie, is that, um, like you know, his whole face is pretty much burned off, and so his teeth are completely exposed. He doesn't have lips, and uh, it's a cool look. Yeah, it looks really badass. But the problem is, is that he still forms words and articulates them perfectly, as if he has lips. Yeah, he's like, "Oh yes, I've been down this road before." And it's like, <laughs> "You shouldn't be able to say that <laughs> at all, my friend." <laughs> say, say, Buttercup, Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like that's kind of what I would have expected. But uh, I mean, like from from movies in that from that time period and all that, that's kind of like normal fare because this was the same kind of thing with American Werewolf in London when his friend showed up in the porno theater as the skeleton, right? And he, so he's like completely decayed, but he just is talking to him normally, and so you know it was just kind of a trope back then, I guess. Well, I get for that one though, I could kind of say is. A, he's he's like a ghost though, so yeah, I, I can give yeah. him that for the ghost. But you know that's the same kind of criticism that I have of. Um, of the uh, uh, Batman, uh, the Dark Knight is mm-hmm. Two Face. You never see him putting eye drops in. He has no eyelid, oh, so yeah. that left eye is constantly drying out. It should be, it should burn like hell, but you never see him putting any dro- any uh, eye drops in. Yeah, it's not a big deal, but if you just showed it once to dress it, and then it wouldn't come up again. Right. Yeah. Right. And you sh- you show him dabbing his chin because he didn't have a cheek, so his like saliva's just running outside of his face. But you never see him putting eye drops in, or even just you know just dabbing his chin and squeezing that into his eye. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that's right, that's right. nasty, but yeah. uh, <laughs> but so, something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, I, Dark Man is one of those movies I remember watching. Uh, you know, way back in the day, and it's one that I enjoy. I have a fondness for it. It's not one I own, though. I just mm-hmm. one of the things where I could—I never could bring myself to own it. Like, is it one I feel like I have to own? No. Did I enjoy it? Yes. What I recommended people? Yes. Will yeah. I? Now that I've seen it today, will I watch it again anytime this year? Probably not. Will I watch it next year? Probably not. <laughs> will Will I watch it on my own again unless I'm sitting down watching with someone who hasn't seen it um, yet? Right. Probably not. <laughs> really? Because I was thinking, you know, I would if if my D and D boys hadn't seen it, then I would probably show it to them. But it's, I mean, it's not because I don't like. It's just one of those that I. It's not one I need to see as regularly as something else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the kind of thing that's going to sing to you and change your life like a lot of the movies that we've spoken so highly of in the past. But I mean, it's you know, it's entertaining mm-hmm. the whole way through, and you know, by no stretch is it a bad movie. I I thought it was a very good movie. And I mean, it's it's when I say it's 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 uh, well written. 
uh, that's to say that there are a lot of there are a lot of pieces about it that are are written to to uh, make the make the plot work mm-hmm. without uh, without it being for, like forced to for the plot to work in a particular way. So you've got the um, the fakes the synthetic skin that. Um, that only lasts for so long and it lasts longer in the dark. And so you've got that plot device there. So when he starts to enact his plan or even when he wants to be, just hang out with his girlfriend, it's like, I only have an hour and a half to do that. Yep. You know? So, and so it sets up these situations, but it's not like a kind of force up on plot device. I mean, in a sense it is like, it just so happens that you're working on the synthetic skin you get all burned up. Okay. (laughs) Uh, But, uh, but it, it works well in the whole, in the narrative of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like he, uh, the early on, he salvages equipment, what he can salvage, and it's all busted up. You see that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he robs Robert Durant, so that explains where he has the money to get the other stuff that he needs. Yeah. You know, so the, it, it all kind of wraps those things up nicely. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really kind of cool shots that I think would would be better if they um, if the budget had been stronger. Yeah, yeah. Like that, the, that the early transition from the explosion to the funeral right it's it's a really nice shot um but if the technology had been better to make the green screen like work better and then that that uh that morph dissolve from her in her business suit to her in her her morning dress yeah you know those things uh uh, but that, but again, the camera technique uh, and the editing is, I think, is pretty spot on. Yeah, like the shooting kind of makes up for that in my mind. Um, you know, a green screen, or I guess back then it was blue screen, was very, very primitive at the time. But uh, you know, and, and as we, as I've looked back on some of these movies that have like the 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 weird blue screen, green screen, mm-hmm. and knowing what I know now, and this is just my guess uh, because nowadays it's it's not really an issue so much anymore, right? Especially with the you know technology we have for editing and you know uh, like the the um, well I've said part of editing, but I was uh, not like the cut and splice editing, but more of like the the special effects editing, right? Right. Is that I think the biggest thing that stands out with that is the lighting, mm-hmm. the, with the you know the green screen lighting never matches the lighting on the person. Yeah. yeah. So that they always stand out, have this weird uh like cut out, you know, or outline around them. And I think that, you know, if you if you could if you really looked at that, and cause I maybe that's something I don't think they maybe even looked at before it was like, okay, we need to make sure that however this part is lit, that the other person could be lit the same way. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe in the, when once we combine the two of them, maybe one needs to be lit a little bit brighter than the other so it, it blends better. Yeah. And a big weakness from stuff from back then with Chroma Key was uh the hair. Yo, yeah. Because, I mean, even today, that shit's hard to pull off. And, uh, like, Adobe, for example, has really made great leaps and bounds to making that a simplified process, but it's still not perfect. So, like, back then, that is something that you really see kind of stand out as an issue. But, uh, but yeah, you know, for, for those little hiccups along the way, it never broke the immersion for me. In, I, I think one thing that really makes Darkman work and sell is, again, being Sam Raimi, the part where, where Ted Raimi is popped up out of the sewer. Yep. Right? <laughs> well, first off, <laughs> popping him up out of the sewer. That, okay, first off, that line when he's like, I told you everything is, I know, but let's pretend you didn't. <laughs> that, that's great. That was badass, yeah. Uh, but when he pops him out of the sewer like that, first off, that would like that would just crack his skull and broken his neck, just jamming his head up through <laughs> like a manhole. But you can see clear scenes where it's like a puppet. Yep. <laughs> that is like being dangled back and forth. And I don't really think that Sam Raimi tried to hide that it was a puppet. That kind of works with everything he normally does. So if yeah, you look at yeah. like Evil Dead, not Spider-Man so much, we look at Evil Dead and even something like, um, uh, what's that one? I didn't really care for it at all. But um, it's the horror movie one that he did that really, that uh, uh, dragged me to hell. Mm, okay. I'm um, familiar with it, but I haven't seen it. Uh, I mean, you, you can check it out. It's Okay. Uh, but, uh, there's some elements in Drag Me to Hell where it's obvious that we're doing like stop motion or some kind of puppetry, but knowing that that's what it is kind of sells it. Uh, you know, it's like, I'm not going to try to hide or try to make it blend in and make it so realistic. Right, right. I want to stand out. I, cause sometimes when it stands out like that, it makes it creepier, mm-hmm. you know? And I think in that part, it, it, he's like, I'm not going to really going to try to hide it. It's okay if you see that it's a puppet. 
Um, I'm not going to make it a blatant puppet, like a, you know, like, like a hand with it covered in felt, but, <laughs> you know, but I, I think those things too, also kind of help disguise the low budget to be like, oh, well, we're not trying to fool you. It's okay if you see that that's what this is. Right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes just like kind of owning that will help with your film. Yep. And it's the same thing, like even way back in the day of Shakespeare, they didn't have like stage scenery and stuff. They would just perform on an empty stage and you were supposed to discern where they were at via the context. Hmm. And it's like, it, it worked for them, obviously. Well, I mean, at the same time, I'm also uh, pretending that, that these women aren't men and drag. <laughs> so I guess, I guess I can just pretend that, you know, you're good stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can pretend that you're in a castle. Sure. Why not? <laughs> uh, but yeah, dark man is a, it's an interesting movie. Uh, it really is a kind of a, like a interesting superhero movie of sorts, you know, even though it, it's not. But I also think it kind of handles the whole concept of this vigilante superhero who's not really a superhero. Again, it, it's just mm -hmm. a revenge plot. I mean, I don't think yeah. he really plans on doing anything more other than that. But the great thing about Darkman is you root for him the whole time. Mm -hmm. You root for him. You want him to succeed. You want... Um, you know, you want him to get revenge and all that. And then in he walks away. You know, he has to leave, you know, his his woman because, you know, he obviously can't have her around. Um, and why can't he have her around? Well, one, because he's a monster. And uh, and two, he's unhinged. Yeah. And he knows it. It's interesting because that's also how uh, Spider-Man 1 ended. Right. And uh, the, I don't know if Sam Raimi just has a thing for that or what. Yeah. I think I think somewhere when he was growing up, like uh, an attractive redhead broke his heart, and now he's just like at the end of every movie, if he can, I'm just gonna have <laughs> he's gonna just have have the main character just leave an attractive redhead and just be like, no, sorry, I know you love me, and uh, but you know, I know this, you want this, yeah, this however, this is best. <laughs> uh, it's my decision. It's mine. <laughs> uh, but I was gonna say. At the end of Darkman, though, we actually really have a very troubling scene, which is here's a guy with, you know, uncontrollable strength um, and an a incredibly smart mind. It, well, his, his technology kind of got blown up in the end, but yeah. I'm sure he still has that money somewhere. Or if not, he can find money or whatever, but he's still unhinged. Right? You have this crazy guy walking around that could snap at a moment's notice and, like, take your fingers and bend them all backwards and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the end of Con Air when... Um, oh, Steve Buscemi? Yeah, where it's like, no, that's not a happy ending. That's not good news. No, it's not. <laughs> no. I'm not going to celebrate this fucking psychopath walking the streets. What are you, crazy? Yeah, Garland Green, that Mar uh, Marietta Mangler. I'm like, yeah, he's just walking around. And it's like, oh, yeah, he's saying, you know, we got the whole, he's got the whole world in his hands with the little girl and didn't kill her. So he's okay. He's reformed now. No, let's go back to that scene where it's like, you know, I drove through two states wearing a woman's head as a hat. Remember that? <laughs> he hasn't changed. <laughs> and now what? He wins it at, at craps, which means now he has more money to, uh, like, do more awful things. No, that's I'm, not good. I'm gonna buy a secret lair. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we have Dark Man and uh, and just running around there, just doing whatever he wants to. I, I do, I do have to say that I'm kind of glad that he never perfected the formula for the mask, because that that kind of happy ending is something I would have expected. But it's like he never had it perfected. He never got to where it could last longer than an hour and a half. Right. It hinted that he was starting to figure it out, but he never finalized it. And then, of course, during the final conflict, he just blows up his lab. It's like, oh, now now we got nothing. <laughs> well, as long as it's in the dark, um, mm -hmm. then it should last. And, and and I get the feeling it has to be it has to be pure dark. Yeah. Now, it yeah. just can't be at nighttime. It has to be, like, you know, seriously dark, and the mask would last uh, longer. So, But at the same time, again, we're talking about a, you know... A, a unhinged lunatic running around if he had technology where he can make a mask and it wouldn't dissolve mm -hmm. that would just make things worse so at <laughs> least at least if he if he, he could only be crazy for 90 minutes at a time <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah um the villains were pretty despicable yeah i gotta give them that uh of course like the guy who like cut off fingers that made me 
extremely clinched up there. <laughs> I don't I don't like uh, stuff getting cut off. <laughs> From the guy who likes body horror. <laughs> just don't cut things off. You can <laughs> mutate it and disfigure it all you want. Melt- you just, just as long as it all stays intact. Melt it with acid, you know. <laughs> that's that's how you lose your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just they just get disabled. <laughs> Leg disabled. <laughs> uh, or if you you know try to commit suicide the wrong way. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, no, no, just just let it breathe. <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> oh, what was his name? Donnie? Oh, what was his name? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> I know that the band was Titanica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, your fucking parents sued us. <laughs> you know, that was also from Mr. Show. Okay. <laughs> that was from, from the, the taint thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a five-inch taint. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, that, that that is a pretty disturbance. In it's one thing to do something like that to, you know, to torture your your rival, but then, like you see later on, he's like when they killed the 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 lab assistant, he's like, yeah, bring me his fingers. Yep. And <laughs> just trophies. You're right. And then he's got that whole thing like, why? What do you do? Like, like oh, I just can't. So just imagine this. Okay, here I am. I played like sports in high school. I got my trophies in, and you know maybe I sit back and uh, listen to some music. And I just look back and just kind of like you know put on some Brink Springsteen. Glory days, <laughs> yeah, pass you by, glory days. And I'm sitting there, yeah, you know, just like I remember that touchdown, and afterwards <laughs> I got that awesome BJ. How much you, you know. bet? Uh, how much you want to bet? I can throw that football over that mountain over there. <laughs> <laughs> But so does he all sit back and everything and like and look at this like oh yeah I remember when I cut that finger off yeah he was like I'm not afraid of you and then I cut that finger off he was afraid of me good times good times like what do you what do you do with the, with the trophy case like that I don't know <laughs> I'm like ah oh, ah oh. and it, it, what's even worse well I mean he's a big time you know crime boss criminal guy so it's not that big thing but he keeps him on his mantle. Yeah, he's in a, in a cigar box on his mantle, like you know, like that's that's not cool, you know. <laughs> I mean, that'd be that'd be like me me keeping my like I don't know my collection of like uh like leg show and barely legal like on my bookcase right next to <laughs> like of mice and men and, and a call to arms, be like, oh wow, he had a really good bit. Ba- oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, War and Peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, I've always, always thought about reading that. You you read all of these? <laughs> Man, I got stuff from the cover 60s, to cover. 70s, 80s, 90s. It's like masturbating in a time machine. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't, I know. You just, just kick that right on the mantelpiece, huh? All right. <laughs> Word. <laughs> uh. Uh, but yeah, Dark Man is kind of cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun movie. I would I would definitely recommend it to people. The 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 final one of the final scenes, uh, you know, where he's like hanging on to uh, the uh, the helicopter yep. and flying through the city. It's nice, you know. So yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. So yeah, if you yeah. haven't seen Dark Man, uh, I would I would definitely say check it out. You know, you might enjoy it more than me. Be like, yeah, I can watch Dark Man. You know, so some people have movies that that they watch like once a year. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. like I know but for you. Uh, Fight Club is a, is a is a birthday movie. You yeah, know, you watch yeah. Fight Club every day, and some people are like, yeah, yeah. Once a year, I watch. I'll like watch this, or like once a year, like I'll go back and read this book or these series of books. You know, right, right. Um, I know a guy that I work with that um, has watched like Frasier, like <laughs> the complete series. Wow, like multiple times. Uh, I think like once a year, he'll just sit down and like watch Frasier. Like, and it, and I want to say they that he binges it. But I think he just watches it like season, like episode one, season one, like like five episodes a day or something like that, you know, just until he finishes it, which is uh, which is kind of you know kind of cool man, for yeah. people to do that. It's like you really love the show, and yeah, and you know I'm, I'm a big fan of Night Court, and I say that all the time. And on the weekdays when it's on, um, and I'll man, yeah, I'll I'll watch it. And even though sometimes like I just saw this episode two weeks ago because they they show like four or six episodes. A uh, like a day, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so you're getting what like uh like tw- uh twenty to thirty episodes a week, you know. So yeah, you yeah. pretty much like you're gonna go through like almost the entire like series 
uh, within like a you know uh, maybe a five or uh, six week period. Right, right. right. And I'm just tossing numbers out there. I really don't know. But anyway, I get I guess kind of like if you're doing that, if you're doing like uh, almost thirty a week, then you're pretty much doing like a season a week. Yeah. So yeah, so within like six weeks, you've pretty much done the entire the entire series. So I know that I just saw this episode like four or six weeks ago, right. and now, now here I am. I'm watching it again, but so uh, I am. I love it that much, but I'm not going through it from beginning to end. But right. yeah. so people, yeah. I said people do that, but you, you may become one of those people that are like, yeah, I've got to watch Dark Man once a month because I really do like it, or <laughs> or you just maybe like I hated it, or it's like yeah, I watched it. It was worth watching. That's all I can say. But like you know, I would show it to other people. Yeah, but yeah. I, I I dug it, and I'm glad that you dug it too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then afterwards, uh, after the movie, I was showing you the, uh, the Dark Man. I think it's a NECA action figure that I have that I bought yeah. a, a while back. It's been like maybe 10, 12 years that I bought it, which is really cool. Uh, you guys, you know, I don't know if you can find one, maybe on eBay or something, but it's cool. It has him like on the, uh, the girders of the uh, skyscraper they were building, and he's standing there. The detail on his, uh, on his cloak is really cool, and oh, he, came yeah. with, uh, he came with a hat, interchangeable head and hands. So, is that Madam Gal? Sorry, uh, we're uh, watching Nicolas Cage's Sorcerer's Apprentice um, <laughs> while we're doing this podcast, and he's talking to this Chinese lady in this ancient library, and I swear, oh, damn, he just knocked the shit out of her. Yeah, because... Uh, oh, you got knocked the fuck out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, this scene I know about where where uh, he speaks to her in uh, in Mandarin, and she refers to it as the other dialect of Chinese. Mm-hmm. And so he throws her through the wall and he's like, that wasn't Mandarin. <laughs> yeah, but I think, I think the woman uh, in that, that's playing that role, same one that played Madame Gao in, um, in Daredevil and Iron Fist and oh, okay. Defenders and all that. Cool. So anyway, sorry, it's an interruption, folks, but right. you guys should know us by now. Nicholas Cage mm-hmm. takes precedence. Is he like a, he's like a Chinese centaur? What, what's going on there? <laughs> he, just... uh. he obviously goes to the same barber that Goro does. <laughs> One day I'm gonna grow two extra arms just like you. <laughs> uh, so, oh uh, yeah. But anyway, I would say definitely, definitely check out Dark Man. It's kind of cool. If you're a Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi fan, you haven't seen it yet. I'm not quite sure, you know, why not. Um, but if you like Sam Raimi, you're like I've never heard of Dark Man because you said you'd never heard of it until yeah, then. Yeah, I never knew it was a thing. So yeah. So yeah, check it out. I dug it. Yeah, definitely. Hmm? All right. Yeah. Thanks for giving us a listen, everybody. Yep. Yeah. Uh, have fun. Bye. Yeah, actually, I thought I had something like a nice ending for that, but, uh, you know, but I don't, so, yeah. <laughs> All right there, folks, that was Our Moms Think We're Funny. Let's, uh, let's give them a hand.